Today on Sports Central, we'll be going over our next schedule preview this offseason, and it will be over the Syracuse Orange, and this was a team that went 5-7 and seven in the 2019 season, and yep, bit of a down season for Syracuse, but will they make it back to a bowl game in 2020 is what we're going over here today. We're going to be going over a few players that this team will be losing, who they're going to be returning, and also going over their schedule for the first time this offseason. Starting off the games that this team has had since November, we start off from November 2nd, where they had uh, one of their worst games last season. They played against Boston College. And they took a big loss there, 27 to 58. Once again, uh, that was probably one of their worst losses last season. However, they had a bye week, and then they played Duke on the road, which they had a huge game there. They won that game by 43, 49 to six. And then, exact opposite story when they went to Louisville the following week, they lost to them, 34 to 56. And then they were able to bounce back against Wake Forest and get a good win there, 39 to 30 in overtime. So. Yeah, it was a very, I mean, the big headline for Syracuse, especially in the last few weeks, was how inconsistent they were. I mean, as you can see, they lost by over uh, over 30 to Boston College one week, and then two weeks later, they absolutely destroyed Duke by over 40. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty inconsistent last season for Syracuse, and that's a part of the reason why uh, they went 5-7. and seven. But, yeah, nonetheless, between September and October, they were 3-5, and five, and they were 2-2 two and two between November and the rest of the season. So, yeah, for Syracuse, once again, a bit of a down season, but... Uh, they still certainly, I mean, 5-7 and seven isn't terrible compared to how some teams are. Moving on to returning production for Syracuse. They return their starting quarterback in Tommy DeVito. That's going to be a big return. Uh, he had just over 2,300 yards last season with 19 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. And they do lose their top running back in Mo Neal, though. He's going to be a big loss for this team. He had just over 1,000 yards uh, with 7 touchdowns. And they, they return their second running back in Abdul Adams, which he had just right around 500 yards last season with three additional touchdowns and yeah so they do lose their top running back and wide receiver as you can see below they do lose their top wide receiver in Tristan Jackson and yeah he was just over a thousand yards last season too with 11 touchdowns and they'd also return their second run wide receiver in Taj Harris which he had just over 500 yards last season and then they lose their third wide receiver in Sean Riley so yeah once again they do lose their top running back and wide receiver that's going to be um, a big impact to this team going into the next season or going into the next season is why I should say but they also return their second running back and their second wide receiver so that's good that they return someone at the top at least and so I do expect Abdul Adams and Taj Harris to both be big impacts on this offense next season if they're healthy uh, but they do lose one offensive lineman along with that with three defensive linemen two linebackers and two in the secondary so yeah there's a modern amount of losses for this team especially on the defense uh, they're taking a couple of major hits on the defense they're losing seven uh, starters from the 2019 season so yeah it's certainly going to be a bit of a rebuilding year in my opinion for Syracuse I think this team certainly had a ton more potential last season I mean I think they should have made a bowl game uh, but certainly I mean some seasons just kind of go that way but certainly Syracuse had the talent to make it to a bowl game last season but the good thing is they do return their quarterback in DeVito once again he's going to be a big part for this team next season and yeah also returning your top or your second running back in your second wide receiver that's going to be big too but yeah, once again, there are just a few losses on this team where it makes me question whether Syracuse uh, could make it to a bowl game in 2020 or not. Uh, but is Syracuse a dark horse heading into 2020? There are a ton of dark horses in the ACC, in my opinion, heading into 2020. If, if, you watch, if you've watched some of my schedule previews on these ACC teams, I mean, you'll hear that a lot. Like Virginia Tech could be won easily. Uh, you could also say that about North Carolina, Virginia etc but Syracuse I don't think that they're going to be on this list heading into 2020 I think this is a team that's going to hang right around five to seven wins and um, there's a chance that they make a bowl game but it's certainly going to be close and they could easily go back to five and seven who knows about now on your schedule for the 2020 season you start off the season on a Friday September 4th where you play Boston in college then you also have Rutgers on the road the following week your first home game actually comes in the third week of the season against Colgate and then you got Western Michigan to finish off your September and October it's gonna be a tougher month you got Louisville at home that'll be a tough game you got a bye week then you got Liberty at home uh, which that should be winnable but you got a brutal game against Clemson on the 24th and then on the 31st you got Georgia Tech then in November you got Wake Forest NC State Florida State and Pittsburgh in that order along with road games to Wake Forest and Pitt so yeah overall here's what I'm expecting I'll give you three guaranteed wins for Syracuse I'll say that they beat Colgate Liberty and Georgia Tech guaranteed uh, but certainly, I think for Syracuse, this is not all that tough of a schedule at all. I mean, you got Boston College, Rutgers, and Western Michigan. All three of those games are very winnable. Uh, the reason why I didn't put all three of those as uh, guaranteed wins would be because um, just because they're on the road. So, of course, when you're having to play on the road uh, to two consecutive teams, Boston College and Rutgers, and let alone to start off the season, then you got Western Michigan on the 26th. I'm not going to put them as guaranteed wins, but I do expect Syracuse to really contend in those games, and I do expect them to possibly... Uh, pull out some wins so 
Yeah, certainly there are six very winnable games there, and I mean, you can also count out a couple of really winnable games. I mean, NC State's very winnable. You got them at home, so yeah, certainly for Syracuse, your record estimation is going to be five and seven to seven and five. I do expect them to hang right around where they were last season, or even better, um, make a bowl game. So I do expect them to hang around and possibly make a bowl game. I, it would not surprise me a single bit uh, to see them make it to a bowl game, but. Yeah, I consider putting in a 6-8 to eight record estimation or 6-win to 8-win record estimation for this team. But, yeah, once again, just with the road games, I decided not to. Uh, but, yeah, once again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Syracuse. Let me know whether you disagree with anything here. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. But, yeah, once again, for Syracuse, I do expect an improving season in 2020. I think they kind of got the short end of the stick last season. There were just a couple of tough games in there. And certainly, if they could have ground, grinded out a couple more wins, I mean, it would have been a totally different season for Syracuse. But, yeah, thank you guys all for watching. Though, once again, if you enjoyed this schedule preview, be sure to slap a like on it. Subscribe as well. Really would appreciate that. Helps out the channel a ton. Uh, but yeah, thanks all for watching once again. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central, and I will see you all later.